now here in this question a circuit is given and we have to find the value of this current i0 okay now to uh, solve this question we have to use mesh analysis or loop analysis and for that i have redrawn the same circuit slightly differently the difference is that this voltage source the same source as this one is drawn on the right side of this diagram but as you can see that this diagram and this diagram they are identical they are exactly the same now here we have to find the value of this current i0 and for that uh, let us use mesh analysis and suppose we have uh, a loop current flowing uh, along this loop like this the value of this loop current should be same as the current as this uh, through this register which is i0 okay so the loop current in this loop is i0 now similarly let us assume that there is another loop current flowing uh, through this loop which is say i1 and finally uh, there is another current flowing uh, like this through this loop which is i2 okay so this is i2 so that means uh, the current flowing uh, here is I0 minus I1. So I0 minus I1. This is the current flowing through this uh, 150 ohm resistance from right to left. Okay. Then similarly, uh, the current flowing here through this 90 ohm j90 ohm inductor from bottom to top this current is i0 minus i2 okay this is i0 minus i2 and finally here through this uh, 20 ohm, uh, through this 100 ohm register this current is i1 minus i2 okay so now let us use mesh analysis so first consider this loop zero this loop okay so loop zero and uh, let me start this loop from here okay suppose this is point a point b then this is point c so i shall start from a then b then c and then back to a Okay, how much is the total voltage drop along this loop? Okay, from A to B, voltage drop is 220 ohm into I0. This is a voltage drop, 220 into I0 voltage drop. Then from B to C, the voltage drop is I0 minus I2 into J90, I0 minus I2 into j 90 okay this is the voltage drop from b to c and then from c to a the voltage drop is 150 into i0 minus i1 so i0 minus i1 multiplied by 150 ohm uh, this is the voltage drop from c to a all together this should be equal to zero okay that's according to Karsop's uh, voltage law kvl now if we reorganize these terms uh, then we will get uh, uh, and, and uh, let me before that make all of this plus plus and plus okay so after reorganization we will get i0 together with 220 uh, plus j90 
plus 150 that will be the coefficient with i0 then minus i1 uh, into 150 and then minus i2 into uh, j90 this is equal to 0 now one thing you may notice it will be useful uh, so now we are considering loop number 0 okay and therefore the coefficient of this loop current i0 is actually the sum of all the impedances along loop 0 so this is our loop 0 and you see that the sum of all these three impedances is 220 plus j90 plus 150 that is the coefficient of i0 then while considering loop 0 the coefficient of i1 is same as the negative of this impedance common between loop 1 and loop 0 that is minus 150 here and similarly the coefficient of i2 in uh, loop 0 is same as the common impedance between loop 0 and loop 2 so this is the common impedance and so we have negative of that minus j90 okay so this is this may be useful uh, to notice Achha. then let us consider say loop uh, 1 that means this loop okay and here uh, let me now uh, call this node as node d and let me start from node d okay so from node d to node a how much is the voltage drop that is i1 into minus j120 okay so i1 into minus j120 this is the voltage drop from d to a then from a to c from a to c how much is the voltage drop that is 150 into uh, this impedance into the current going from a to c that is i1 minus i0 i1 minus i0 okay and then from c to d how much is the voltage drop that is 100 ohm multiplied by the current flowing from c to d which is i1 minus i2 okay and then this should be equal to 0 now uh, we can make all these minuses as plus uh, they are common now from here if you reorganize these terms you will get uh, i1 multiplied by uh, 150 plus 100 and plus minus j 120 <coughs> so this is the coefficient of i1 then with i2 okay i2 is here so with i2 we have minus 100 and with i0 i0 is here we have minus uh, 150 i0 okay and all this together is equal to 0 once again you notice that now we are considering loop number 1 okay so loop number 1 and therefore the coefficient of i1 loop current i1 is the sum of these three impedances uh, along the loop that is uh, 150 plus 100 and uh, minus uh, j120 okay and then the coefficient of i0 is the negative of the impedance common between loop 1 and loop 0 that is minus 150 and similarly the coefficient of i2 is minus 100 that is the negative of the impedance uh, common between uh, uh, loop 1 and loop 2 okay anyway uh, this is 
uh, I mean this this uh, special form is true because we have considered all these loop currents in the same direction anti-clockwise okay uh, everywhere okay that's why this special form is true otherwise uh, it's it may be easier that you uh, uh, accumulate these uh, uh, voltage drops along uh, this path and then you simplify it okay so some uh, so if you are very confident you may write this step directly otherwise uh, avoid this start from this step okay uh, at big at the beginning it is easier to start from this step okay so this is the equation kvl equation for loop one next we shall consider uh, the kvl equation in loop two okay so let me uh, make some space maybe here and now we are going to write parts of voltage law along loop two that is this larger loop okay now suppose i call this as node e and uh, node f okay uh, so let me now start from node f and then i'll go to e d c b like that okay so starting from f to e there is a voltage uh there should be a plus minus sign in this question otherwise uh, we cannot uh, otherwise it's uh, incomplete so okay so let's assume this is the plus minus sign in the original question okay so then from loop uh, in the along this loop 2 starting from node f from f to e there is a voltage rise of 75 volt okay so 75 volt is voltage rise then from e to d there is a voltage drop how much 20 plus j30 20 plus j30 multiplied by i2 okay then from d to c okay uh, the voltage drop from d to c is 20 multiplied by the current flowing from d to c which is i2 minus i1 i2 minus i1 this is the current flowing from d to c then from c to b how much current is flowing from c to b i2 minus i0 notice the direction of the arrow so c to b the current is i2 minus i0 i2 minus i0 this multiplied by j90 is the voltage drop from c to b okay so all together this should be equal to zero now uh, if you simplify this okay you will get uh, so what will be the coefficient of i2 let me write i2 first okay so with i2 we will have uh, 20 plus j30 and plus 100 uh, plus j90 this will be the total coefficient so notice i2 is here then here and also here okay so if you aggregate all the coefficients this is the coefficient 20 plus j30 plus 100 plus j90 then let me write what is the coefficient of i1 okay so with uh, uh yeah and yeah th and there will be a minus sign overall here yeah, yes okay and now with i1 with i1 the coefficient will be uh, 100 and then uh, with i0 the coefficient will be uh, 9 j90 okay and there is a constant of 75 so let me bring this to the right side so this becomes minus 75 <laughs> okay Achha, now uh, further let me make this plus this plus then this will become uh, minus okay and 
here another minus. So this is the equation for loop 2. Okay, now we have three equations and three unknowns. Okay. Uh, so here is our equation 1, here is our equation 2 and here is our equation 3. Okay, so let us now solve these three equations together. So for that, uh, okay, so how, and, and notice that we have to only find the value of i0. In the question, only the value of i0 is required. So we don't need to solve i1 and i2. Okay, this i0 is the only unknown that we need to solve. And for that, uh, look at these three equations and let us apply Kramer's rule. Okay, so if we apply Kramer's rule, yeah, so there are three equations, so let me write these coefficients uh, to get uh, one at, uh, I mean, in a nicer way. So here, the coefficient is uh, 370 plus J90 for I0, okay, look at here. So 370 plus G90, this is the coefficient of I0. Then coefficient of I1 is minus 150, okay, minus 150. Then the coefficient of I2 is minus J90, minus J90. These are the coefficients of uh, I0, I1 and I2 in equation 1. And the right side of this equation is 0. So let me write that here. Okay, now look at equation 2. Here the coefficient of I0 is minus 150. Let me write it here. Then the coefficient of I1 is uh, 250 plus minus J120. 250 minus J120. And the coefficient of uh, I2 is minus 100. Minus 100. And the right side of this equation is 0. Now let's look at equation number 3. Here the coefficient of I0 is minus J90, minus uh, J90. Then the coefficient of I1 is minus 100, minus 100. Then the coefficient of I2 is, uh, if you add this, uh, 120 plus J120, 120 plus J120. And the right side of this equation is 75. Okay. Uh, and... So these are the basically coefficients of uh, I0, I1 and I2 and this is the right side of the equation, right hand side. Now according to Kramer's rule, the value of I0, this first coefficient will be equal to the ratio of the determinant of two matrices. Which are those matrices? Uh, let me copy these numbers and let me put it here at the denominator. Now, if you calculate the determinant of this 3 by 3 matrix, that, that will be in the denominator. And then let me make another copy of these numbers, these matrices, and then since we want to find the value of i0, we will replace all these coefficients of i0 with this right hand side numbers. That means 0, 0 and 75. Now this is another matrix. We, you can again calculate the determinant of this matrix and the ratio of these two determinants will give the value of i0. If you calculate this, then the answer will be 0 0.2347 with an angle of uh, 27.9 degree. Okay, so that is the answer. This is in ampere. 